How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have oceans over airplanes, and they can say their names and what they do in the band. Uh, my name's Tony, and I'm uh, one of the, the lead singers of the group and the bass player. Uh, I'm Ethan. I'm, uh, I am also sing, and I play guitar. Wow, you guys are, like, multi-talented. Like uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess we, uh, we kind of do a couple different things. With being a three-piece now, uh, you know, you kind of have to pick up the slack and, and here and there and do multiple things to get the job done. So Awesome, guys. So my first question is, how did you start Ocean Over Airplanes, and how did you get your members? Uh, it's been it's been an evolution. I mean, we it started as uh, as a side project okay. for me from a band that I had, uh, you know, six seven years ago, and um, it's evolved into what it was today. It originally started as a, as a name called the Cover Up, and then we eventually oh, cool. changed the name to Oceans Over Airplanes once we realized that we were gonna. It was like an acoustic <laughs> kind of rock project, okay. and then we. Uh, played some shows and just realized we were a rock band and quit trying to fool ourselves. Like we were writing rock <laughs> songs with acoustic guitars, and so we're like, "Let's go full on electric." And then, um, yeah, over time, uh, the members we've had some members come and go, um, but it's it's kind of been cool that the the final group that we are currently is like we've all kind of grown up through the same scene. So we've we've played in other prospective projects and played shows with each other, known of each other, and. You know, for me, being like the kind of founding member, I'm I'm lucky enough to be playing with guys that like when I saw those bands were like the guys that I like respected like the most or were like, you know, like I could totally see myself playing with that guy. So like our Joe, our drummer has been like he's probably he's like number two on the totem pole. We've been on this like six years together now. And, um, you know, Joe was one of those guys I saw drum and I was like. Yes, like if, if that guy ever becomes available, like you're gonna take and, him. Like yeah, it would be that would be that. And like I said, like Ethan's been one of those guys that um, super talented guitar player and and singer, and I like fell in love with, like his lyrical style and everything uh, when I saw him play in other bands. And then I had a had the um, I have a studio as well, and so I was lucky okay. enough to like record one of his side projects he was doing, and I was like even more floored by that and so it's just kind of all by chance you know it, it wasn't like i've said like this is you know ask these guys directly it's just kind of been this natural evolution of where we've gotten today and i think that that's cool too because like just the the way that bands find each other and like members you know like find each other too it's just kind of like it's unlike any other thing like it's just like you're, you're bonded by music so that's definitely cool and you know i I've, i'm almost positive you're like to ethan you're like listen like stop that side project like <laughs> band. like let's do this yeah yeah i mean it's it's you know it's it's cool when you play with bands a lot and then you have that mutual respect for of each course. other and that and that's kind yeah. of what attracts you to people from the start like Absolutely. you know like it's that first meeting like when i know i met joe for the first time it was like we just had that connection that's and great. like we just had that moment and i know like even with ethan i like we got done playing i think one of our first sets and we had been playing for a while as oceans at the time oh, and so like he okay. came up after after our set it was like that general like I love this. I, I love what you guys are doing. This is this is fantastic. And you don't forget things like Those that. Moments, like when people yeah. are like truly like, yeah, like this is no BS. Yeah, like being like that. genuine. Yeah, it's yeah. just totally genuine. And, you know, it's you, you don't forget things like that. And it's like with the music industry, they always tell you it's like so small. Like and you throat, never know yeah, how it's going to yeah. be. And so like those moments, you know, they just they catch up with you sometimes in a good way. You know, like with the way that you act. So. Absolutely, absolutely. My next question, guys: What are some favorite local venues you guys like to play at, or even go catch shows at? Um, in Chicago, um, I love the Bottom Lounge. That's probably one of my favorite places to play, um, and go to shows um, and uh, see a lot of shows at Subterranean and um, and uh, House of Blues are the the big ones for me. Yeah, um, Bottom Lounge has kind of become like quickly become like one of my cool. favorite venues in Chicago. Uh, Metro is is always cool. That's kind of like you know that holy grail that you know <laughs> yeah. as you grow up being like you know in the rock and punk rock community and stuff. Like if you get to play there or see shows there, that's where you see a lot of bands cut their teeth. Um, and Bee Kitchen is also like one of those cool ones that's like. You know, not everyone's maybe first choice, but I mean, it's great for those when you can see cool bands do like intimate shows there for Absolutely. like, you know, like 300 people. It's it's really a great experience. Also, a shout out to uh, Wire. Is it called The Wire? The Wire. The Wire. Yeah. It's okay. a place in Berwyn that we just played a couple months ago. It's a really, really cool venue. 
Yeah, and, awesome. that, and it's tough because you have like those bands that are right on the fringe of the city, on the cusp, yeah. yeah, or like venues that are on the fringe of the city, and they don't get the the love because they're not like downtown. Yeah, they're not in the city. But yeah, it's a you. yeah, it's a fantastic venue. And also for me, like I ask this question because like if I ever go traveling, like I want to check out these yeah. venues and hopefully catch a show if there is one in that area. But my next question to follow up, um, you know, favorite venues. What was the last show that you guys went to that you didn't play? Like attended as like an attendee. Uh, we we could say South by Southwest. We we were yeah, at that together. We, about that. Um, we went and there was a South, there was a showcase an official showcase that was like featuring Australian artists oh, primarily. Yeah. And so there was a guy called Dadiri. Okay. What's his name? Um, and he, I, I mean, back in Australia, like he's talking, like he's selling out like eight hundred, like massive, plus, yeah, yeah, like he's doing like eight hundred cap venues and selling them out and everything. Um, and we met another artist that we didn't get to see her play, unfortunately. But her name was Stella Donnelly, okay. and she's really cool too. And she's like kind of doing the same thing over in Australia. Um, and they were kind of making their first rounds of going through the states and everything. But um, it was really cool. It was just him in a like a small bar, very intimate show. But it was pretty fantastic. Do you have a different one, Ethan, or that was pretty much the same thing? Um. Yeah, that was the last show I okay. saw. I think before that, I saw the early November in, oh, sick. in October. Oh, man. Um, and they, that was on their um, This Room is Too Cold tour when they played uh, that yeah, whole album yeah, from yeah. front their to hometown, back. Their hometown band of uh, New Jersey. So yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm big fans of the early November. And so, like, getting to see that was, like, absolutely fantastic. Because, like, I, I think I started listening to them, like, after that album came out like sick. really so it was okay. like i missed that whole album cycle and everything i got to see them on you know the mother of the path mechanic yeah, yeah, i got yeah, to yeah. see them on that tour and then that was like their goodbye tour as well so when i saw them for the first time it was also it's hey this is time, going out of business time, yeah. <laughs> so it was cool getting to see them again and, and see them play that album. maybe they'll come back who knows that would yeah be, that would be nice but my next question if there's any questions i'm going to ask this is probably the most important one who are some of your musical influences um Mine are more kind of like the late 2000s emo. So okay. like the Get Up Kids, Jimmy Eat World are big yeah. ones. Uh, Mineral is one of my favorite bands. Um, and yeah, I mean, recently I've kind of been revisiting a lot of the new pop punk bands like uh, Knuckle Puck and Real Friends. And, yeah. and uh, you know, a lot of these bands are from Chicago. And so I've just been, you know, rocking out to their stuff. Tony? And uh, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm like a 90s guy too. Okay. So, but... Um, you know, so I love like the Gin Blossoms, oh, and nice. uh, I'm also a big Jimmy Eat World fan. Uh, early November is another one. Spitalfield is another one that I, I revisit quite often. But then I love like you know Pearl Jam and the Foo Fighters. It's kind of like what I, I really cut my teeth on like in, in my early days. So, but then I, I like staying connected. You know, now like Movements is a band oh, that I I've, I've really been into um, as of late. Um, and Turnover, Turnover um, is great, another yeah. one. I just feel like kind of like whatever Will Yip is putting out. Yeah, like yeah, that, Will Yip. I just um, I can't get enough of that sound and what he does for bands. So it's like. It just seems the artist that he works with, I just tend to just love that, that final product that he's putting out. So, Yeah, I, I have to say, if you're, like, I mean, if you're in that age bracket, you know, 2000s emo, like, you know, 90s emo kind of stuff, like, Jimmy Eat World, like, that's a band I grew up listening to, too. So, Foo Fighters, another, I mean, they're not emo, but, like, a, again, another band, like, if you're in that age gap, like, you listen to that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, it's good to know that you know you're mentioning those bands but kind of the follow-up influences who have you been jamming more recently maybe you've already di kind of disclosed it already but if there was any others um yeah i would say like heavy in my rotation right now is has been movements i think that their their newest album i've been listening to like um pretty non-stop um i've also though been digging um like um trying to think of the <laughs> Now, now, <laughs> now, no, it's it. it just kind of been on the, the on brain the, on fart the floor, moment. Yeah, maybe yeah. we'll come back to it. Um, I really dig Moose Blood. Right oh now. yeah, cool, yeah. awesome. Um, they're one of the the bands. Awesome, awesome. I would also say Ryan Adams, like oh, his nice. new album yeah. Prisoner. Like I, I keep on. I just feel like. It does, if I'm just kind of like in a chill mood, I just I just put that album on and awesome. give. It, I feel like that's kind of like the best thing he's done in like a long time. Um, so yeah, I've I've really connected with with that album as well awesome next question guys you guys could pick a song to cover what song would it be Ooh, that's a good one um for me it's for me this is heaven by jimmy world oh Ooh, good one yeah i love that song tony um you know 
Uh, that's kind of cheesy because we already <laughs> do it. Um, no, I, I mean, I love Jim Blossom stuff. So I always okay. feel like really free when we, when we've done it in the past, like we've done like follow you down. Um, but like, um, yeah, I, I love stuff like that, but you know, I might I, like throw a curveball or something and like maybe, um, um, gosh, uh, I was thinking actually recently there was a, Oh, there's an Avid brothers song okay. that that's out there right now. And I, I don't, I don't know the name of the song, but I know the al- it's like off that album. <laughs> yeah. that, that's like the last big one they did, you know, obviously with Rick Rubin and everything. Yeah. Um, that I, I really enjoyed. Actually, Manchester Orchestra just did a, a cover of oh, it, nice. like an acoustic cover of it. And, um, yeah, so that, the, I know I've been kind of jamming some of that Abbott Brothers stuff too lately, so... Um, I wish nice. I knew the name of the song. <laughs> I just <laughs> well, been listening well, to the album front f- to back. If you figure it out, I'll put some text yeah. above. <laughs> and we're going to not talk about what just happened. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> next question, guys. Um, another fun one. Favorite food to eat? Got to ask that one. This wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't, <laughs> no. That wasn't a Freudian No, 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 no it was not. Definitely was um, not. Okay, I'll start with it. I, I, I love tacos. Oh, um, I'm yeah. a big taco fan. So whether it's like breakfast tacos <laughs> or we're just talking like normal tacos, if you want, like I was just down in Florida, so I was having like shrimp tacos and oh. stuff. So, you know, a good okay. taco for me is, is I'm in, I'm in heaven. Um, I like Asian food, like um, Vietnamese food. Uh, pho and banh mi sandwiches and um, Korean food like bagogi and kimchi and so. sick sick yeah. alright guys next question if you could pick somebody to collaborate with whether it be you know a guest vocalist spot or a producer role who would you want to go with um, uh, since he's here I'll go with Aaron Gillespie <laughs> um, I, I always loved Under Oath Child and stay <laughs> Under Oath right <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be awesome to work with him yeah Tony um well, we've kind of been toying with the idea. Actually, ironically enough, we've been we've been trying to talk to, to Ace Enders from uh, oh, early November. Sick. We've That's been awesome. talking about uh, with our new EP that we're working on of actually doing like an acoustic song. Sick. And I feel like he would Ace, just fit. Yeah, I just feel like he's done some awesome acoustic songs just for early November, and oh, then he's nice. also like his solo stuff that he's done and everything too. It's like been acoustic driven, so it's like that would be like a new direction for us. Like we haven't really done just an acoustic song, so. Um, I couldn't think of anyone better maybe to kind of team up and, and work with. I could, ma- I could maybe help you out with that yeah. a little bit. So uh, I, I know a few people that know him. So, But anyway, next question, guys. If there was another musical instrument that you could just, like, rip on, what would it be? I know you guys do a lot now, so that's probably you know, I, I really, a I mean, question. I, I like to play on drums, but I wish I was, like, just truly <laughs> proficient that I could just rip on them. Like I was like interdependent, like on all four limbs and can just really hit the drum. You know, you know, when it's a good drummer, they just make the way they hit a it drum and the way it sounds, yeah. you know, there's just like so no smooth, hiccups. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish I could just get behind a drum kit, especially like when you're trying to explain stuff to like a drummer, you have an idea in your head. It's just one of those tough things. It's like, dude, if I could just get behind the kit and show <laughs> you really quick, you know, like I would maybe feel like how Dave Grohl feels. Where yeah. It's like, Taylor, uh, watch me do this. And you duplicate that. He's played like so, so many instruments. So it's like, that's like no problem for him. But yeah. Ethan. Um, well, we, we went to Sweetwater on the way here. Sick. And there was this awesome like little bowl that you could hit and it made like these really like I don't know what genre like you call like, uh, like kind of like, like tropical. What you'd hear in like what NPR, was. like in between, <laughs> like some kind of weird instrument, and I thought it was awesome. So it I was, would like to play that. It, it was a, it was kind of like a steel drum, it's a, I was but a little, say, a, yeah, a little bit more okay, ethereal. Yeah, a little bit more ethereal. Okay, okay. You know, his world music game was strong. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. That, that's gonna be on the next record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look out for it. Yeah, they're gonna s- completely shift tracks. They were like, we were talking about rock music. Now we're just gonna become a world band. Yeah, choirs and everything. <laughs> All right, guys. Next question. In your opinion, who puts on a great live show? And I'm speaking in terms of like bands you've seen live. Um, from my, kind of like a more local, but now they just got signed to um, Spartan Records, I cool. believe it is. Cool. Um, uh, they're a Chicago band called Hidden Hospitals. And okay. like for a three piece and us becoming a three piece, they are like one of the tightest, awesome sounding bands that, that I've, that I've like. You know, for like their level, like where you would think they're at, and they have like um, a live show that they have, like they're fantastic. Um, and then recently, with bands I've seen in the past couple of years, um, I really thought like uh, Failure. I went and saw like cool. a, a Failure yeah. reunion show. 
uh, when they did the Fantastic Planet run, and it was just one of those other things that they just have everything so dialed in, like sound-wise and everything, that it's just like it, it didn't even matter if they were standing still or anything else like that. It's just like the, the overall sound and the presence of them just standing by the microphones, they were unbelievable. Awesome. Ethan? Yeah, for me, uh, I've seen Thursday a bunch of times, Ooh. and I don't even know if they're together right now. They another, seem to like, another New Jersey band, yeah. and they're actually they actually – are getting back together. I so. know that they, all of these bands keep yeah. getting back <laughs> But every time I go to their show, I feel like it was like 10 years ago and just like the whole crowd is just like doing the scream parts and, um, you know, it's just, uh, they always put on such an awesome show. Sick, sick. All right, guys, next question. To kind of follow up like, you know, best bands that you've seen live, if you could compile a dream tour, who'd be on it? Do we get to play with? Absolutely. Just, uh, Why not? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I would love to play with with Jimmy at World. They're like just such a huge yeah. influence on us. Um, I even think we were talking about like, like the Get Up Kids would be cool, like yeah. to get on a show with. Like that would just be fun. Like they're kind of in that, you know, kind of all grew up together. Um, yeah, it's just tough, tough because I've been, you know, spanned so many genres, <laughs> you know, like so many years of stuff. Um, but I mean, those would be like two bands that I, I would definitely, definitely love to play with. I'd, I'd like to add at the drive-in. It'd be Ooh. awesome to play with. Ooh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I wouldn't want to follow that up. We'd make them have like, <laughs> I'm sure there'd be yeah. no stage left by the end of it. Awesome, guys. All right, next question. Favorite TV show, favorite movie? For me, um, I like the Goldbergs right now for <laughs> Interesting. TV. Interesting. <laughs> all right. I, I all right. think it's, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, and then with all the eighties references and everything, I'm just I'm a sure, sucker yeah. for it. <laughs> and then movies, um, you know, at the, at the moment, I guess for a movie that I keep on always coming back to, I'm a sucker for like the Sherlock Holmes films, but with like oh, Jude nice. Law and, and you know, uh, um, I don't know. I wanted to say Tony Stark, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> like I just love the way they're shot. You know, it's all, they're all filmed by Guy Ritchie and everything. I yeah. mean, I just love the way that he like shoots film and the way that things are created. So, um, yeah, those like those two films that they came out with, I just always seem to kind of like if it's late night and I'm, <laughs> I'm home alone or something or I need to go to bed, like you put that on. I put that on. Those are my pick the clicks. Ethan, um, my favorite show of all time is definitely Arrested Development, but I'll, I'll yes. pick one that's on right now. Um, Silicon Valley on HBO is just nice. an awesome show. Um, and then for I'll do two for movies too. Uh, the Big Sick um, was a movie that uh, Kumail Nanjun Mani, I think is yes, what saying yep, yep, yeah, um, right. that he wrote, and it is my favorite rom-com of all time. It just came out last year. Um, and then another one is Don't Think Twice. It's a uh, movie about improv, and uh, it's a, just a really, like, really tears at the heartstrings and is hilarious at the same time. So those are my two. Cool. All right, guys. Next question. If there was one album that you could listen to for a month straight on nonstop repeat, what would it be? Um, man, we were kind of talking about this on the way up here. Like certain <laughs> albums, like Desert Island albums, Desert, on our yeah, trip. Desert yeah, Island yeah. Album. you know, we yeah, had a exactly. long trip over here. Um, I, I really love. Um, well, we were talking about Thrice Alchemist Index oh, because it just like spans yeah. so it's many. All the different. Yeah, like we feel like they could really, really do do the thing. Um, besides that, I love Futures by Jimmy oh, World. Yeah, I find like classic. that's one that I can kind of always just go and it spans so many different emotions you know you're trying to th think about that if i had to you know not get stuck in a rut ethan for me it'd, i would say the world is a cold dead place by explosions in the sky oh nice just because like okay. it, it you know there's so it goes up and down so much like no matter where i'm at in trying to figure out how to build this raft i could like feel inspired <laughs> or whatever. and lastly guys probably the most important thing you're going to talk about tell them about your band where they can find you on social media and anything coming up in the next couple months Cool. Yeah. So we're we're super excited right now. We just got done um, recording our our new single that's called Color. Cool. And uh, yeah, we're kind of you're the first ever kind of really announcing this too. <laughs> so go. this is yeah premiere for exclusive, that exclusive baby exclusive. Um, so we're doing uh, we recorded that with Seth Henderson, who's oh, done uh, you know real friends and yep. knuckle puck and sleep on it and it keeps on going on. So we're happy to be a part of that like family and him sick. be. Uh, it's the second time we worked with Seth. Um, and then we'll be recording a music video with Alex Zarek uh, in May, and then we'll be dropping our new single in June, like the first week of June, hopefully, is what we're shooting for, first, second awesome. week of June. Um, and then we will follow up with that in the fall with a four-song EP, Sick. maybe five if we're able to get that acoustic <laughs> song done. So, um, Ace. But yeah, yeah, there you go, Ace. Um, 
so yeah we'll be recording that in the fall and then releasing that um title to be named and everything but uh, um, we are guaranteeing new music <laughs> in in the fall um but yeah no we're super excited about about color and uh you know like it's it's a new step for the band because now cool. we're like I said we're a three piece so this will be like everyone's first glimpse of hearing what what our new deal and our new direction is going to be. It's going to still be rooted in the same ocean stuff that it's going to be familiar to our from our last EP traditions. But um, I think uh, there's some a definite departure um, in 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 several different areas that's that we're super pumped about. Awesome. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to get it. We'll put it up on iTunes and we'll be up on Spotify. You can go there now and get all of our stuff. You can go to our website, um, oceansoverairplanes.com, and it can direct you to all those places. We have our music up on there and we have videos and everything posted okay. where you can hear our last EP. Um, if you give us an email address and want to follow us that way, um, our other EP, Young Nights, you get for free. So that's four oh, cool. songs. Cool. Um, and then pretty much when we start releasing the new stuff, we'll probably start giving away some of traditions as cool. well. Um, to people but yeah otherwise all other stuff oo airplanes on twitter oo airplanes <laughs> on instagram all that stuff is there for you guys awesome well i want to give a shout out to evan from moral support he like commented on i did like a live video and he commented and he's like you need to talk with tony so there <laughs> we go so. shout out to evan love that dude um go check out oceans over airplanes links are in the description go subscribe to your youtube channel it's going to be at the end card of this video um if you enjoyed this interview please subscribe please hit that thumbs up it goes a long way and thanks to oceans over airplanes for doing this interview thanks all right thank you so much hey guys hope you enjoyed the video uh thanks for watching of course uh if you enjoy what we do make sure to go check out the other series we do we do album reviews we do band interviews and we do live videos so definitely go check that out um hit that subscribe button it really helps our channel helps us grow make sure to hit that like button as well uh go follow us on social media that's all down below we try to keep that as updated as possible we also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces